on this pass the end click step by step seven day training day number five you will learn finally about strategies I want to know if everybody can listen to me if you can hear me well if you can see me well just a uh, text yes professor comment on the comment section I can see you well no problems and I will tell you this I have been monitoring YouTube for several years already like I told you on day one we have a an academy that we teach nursing students nurses from all over the world Latino nurses that their primary language is Spanish and we have helped many students thousands of students prepare for the NCLEX and pass the NCLEX and since then I have been monitoring YouTube and watching other reviews other mentors out there that help students prepare for the NCLEX and I have noticed something rather interesting that very seldom do they talk about critical thinking and prioritization strategies and I've always thought why why because in my point of view I think it is one of the most important tools that a nursing student can have in order to pass the NCLEX and I decided to open this YouTube channel NCLEX Crusade International to help these students that are preparing for the NCLEX students like you that you are preparing for the NCLEX I decided to open this channel to help you develop your critical thinking and most importantly learn prioritization strategies because I firmly believe that this is the key to passing the NCLEX I always say this I'm not saying that content is not important it is but if you do not know how to apply nursing content if you don't develop your critical thinking if you don't apply prioritization strategies the chances of passing the NCLEX are minimum maybe many of you that are listening to me that are listening to this live presentation or replay video maybe you've taken the NCLEX before and you have failed ask yourself have you developed your critical thinking are you applying strategies prioritization strategies if the answer is no if you are weak in this area if you need help on developing your critical thinking if you need help learning to apply prioritization strategy this day number five of our past the NCLEX step-by-step -step seven day training is for you so let's not take any more time and let's begin uh, Miss Saylor asked me if you're not extremely strong on your content can you still pass by applying critical thinking I do believe so I do believe so because once you are at the passing line the questions that are going to be involved in those style of questions are critical thinking and prioritization questions if you develop a strong critical thinking and you learn how to apply strategies you can pass remember you need to have basic nursing knowledge you do not need to be an expert but of course you need to know if you're answering a question about let's say a client with renal failure well you need to know what is the function of the kidney you need you need to know the pathophysiology of that condition you don't need to be an expert you do not need to be an expert in the kidney function but you need to know the basics that is why I say do not frustrate yourself trying to memorize everything memorization does not work you need to apply nursing knowledge 
So this is our seven day training agenda. We are already done with day one, day two, day three, and day four. For the past three days, we were focusing on NCLEX categories. So we dedicated three days of our seven day training to teach you about NCLEX categories. If you did not see day one, day two, day three, or day four, please find that video, find those videos and study them. Learn everything that I provided on this video from beginning to end, because then and only then you will really understand day five. If you don't know where to find it, just go to the playlist on our YouTube channel, NCLEX Crusade International, and find the seven day training playlist. You will see all the videos there. All right, so let's begin with today's agenda. Today, we will talk about several strategies, or actually two strategies, and we will practice questions for each one of those strategies. The first strategy that we will cover today is when to call the doctor strategy. And I will explain what I mean by that. Then I will explain to you, I will teach you how to apply the Maslow's hierarchy of needs strategy. And then we are gonna practice questions. That way you can learn how to apply the when to call the doctor strategy and the Maslow's hierarchy of need strategy. Are you ready? Are you ready to begin this awesome day five? Are you ready to develop your critical thinking? Are you ready to learn NCLEX prioritization strategies that will change the way you analyze NCLEX style questions forever? If you're ready, go ahead and comment in the comment section that you're ready to begin. Let's begin with our first strategy. When to call the doctor strategy. Why the name when to call the doctor strategy? What does that mean? Basically, whenever you encounter a question, you're reviewing a question and you see that one of the answers mentions call the healthcare provider call the neurologist call the nephrologist call the anesthesiologist if the answer is same call another person call a healthcare provider you will use this strategy and how is this strategy going to help me professor ray very simple you're going to follow these three simple steps and that will take you to the right answer. So here's, here's how you use this strategy. The first thing that you do, you have to look at each answer and you have to determine if the answers are within your scope of practice. You need to find out if you have answers that are within your scope of practice as a nurse. That's step number one. Step number two, ask this question. Do I have an answer that helps me identify, that helps me solve the patient's problem? Yes or no? If the answer is yes, that there is an answer that you can do to help the patient do it and eliminate the answer that says call the doctor. So this step number two, it is very important. Step number three, if the answers are not within your scope of practice or those answers don't help the patient's condition, then eliminate them and call the healthcare provider. Very simple, right? You might need to review this video again and listen to this one more time. I want each one of you 
to watch this video day five several times because these strategies you do not learn learn them overnight it takes time to learn how to apply them because there are multiple scenarios there are different ways of using this strategy so what I want to do now I want to put a question and I want you to try to use this strategy remember the steps don't forget the steps so on the next question read the question and start identifying the five key factors of an NCLEX question we talked about this day one if you do not know what I'm talking about go back to day one you need to learn first the five key factors of an NCLEX question once you have determined the five key factors then read the answer and as you can see answer number one says call the healthcare provider immediately so this is the key that tells you you can use this strategy now when you develop other strategy you can use these strategies in conjunction for example you can use this strategy with Maslow's hierarchy of needs there are other questions that you can use the, this strategy with assessment versus implementation strategy and little bit by little bit you will learn about all these strategies but for now let's just focus on when to call the doctor strategy so it's very simple is my answer number one to call the doctor immediately or one of the other answers that is the beginning of this analysis that is the beginning of your critical thinking in this question if you tell me an answer if you comment an answer on the comment section tell me why why you selected that answer so I want you to put the answer comma this is my reason why this is why I think this is the answer that way I can read and learn what is your thinking process so it says the nurse working in the PACU post anesthesia care unit recovering so the nurse is working in the PACU and is dealing with a male client after an exploratory laparotomy and it says that this nurse administered a prescribed medication that is hydromorphone I don't know what happened to the to the to the writing here the the PowerPoint is all messed up I don't know why but let's continue bottom line is the nurse in the PACU is working with a male patient that is recovering from an exploratory laparotomy and it says that this nurse administered a prescribed medication that is hydromorphone IVP which means intravenous putsch five minutes later the nurse assesses respiration of eight which intervention should the nurse implement first all right let me see let me see if I can fix this because this is driving me crazy as you guys think I'll see if I can change it so tell me what you think and why I think that's a little bit better there you go all right so let me see some of you are selecting selecting answer number two some of you are selecting answer number four all right so I do not see anybody selecting call the healthcare provider so you decided that calling the healthcare provider 
is not the right answer. At least most of you. Uh, Ryan is saying, we assume we have orders for Naloxon. Correct. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about this statement that Ryan is writing on the comment section. All right. So, we know that this patient, after the prescribed medication of hydromorphone, the respiratory rate is 8. It says, five minutes later, the nurse assesses respiratory rate of 8. So this tells you that the nurse conducted an assessment. What is the nurse first intervention? So what is the nurse first action? Call the doctor, administer naloxone, intravenous push, reassess the client's respiratory status in 20 minutes, and prepare to ventilate the client. So let's use the when to call the doctor strategy. So, is my answer calling the doctor or not? I have to find out. Do I have answers that are within my scope of practice as a nurse? Yes, because as a nurse, I can administer a medication, I can assess the respiratory status, and I can prepare for ventilate, for, to ventilate the patient if necessary. So as a nurse, I can do that. So do I have answers that I can do as a nurse? Yes. What's the other question? Do I have any answer that helps the patient's problem? What is the patient's problem? A respiration of eight because normal is 12 to 20. So the respiratory rate is low. Is there an answer that helps with this condition? Yes. Therefore, calling the doctor is not my priority. Now, understand this. This does not mean that I will not call the doctor. I will call the doctor at one point in time. But it is not my priority. It is not my first answer choice. So I have two, three, and four. If you review this scenario, you will determine that this is an emergency because the patient's respiratory rate is low. The patient has a respiratory problem Therefore, I need to do something quickly. I need to implement. No, not complete an assessment. Therefore, answer number three, I can eliminate. And this is delaying patient care. Because what answer three tells me is that wait 20 minutes and then reassess the patient's respiratory rate or respiratory status. So answer number three, goodbye. Now I have answer number two and answer number four. Is there any clinical indication to ventilate the client? No, the patient is breathing on its own right now. So there is no reason to ventilate this client. Therefore, answer number four, I can eliminate, and the correct answer is answer number two, administer naloxone, which is the antidote, the antidote of hydromorphone or Dilaudid. This is a narcotic, and naloxone or Narcan is the medication that is the antidote whenever we have an overdose of 
narcotics. So this medication is definitely going to help my patient. Now, the question that may arise in your mind is, can I administer naloxone without calling the doctor? Don't I have to call the doctor first and tell the doctor, doctor, my patient respiration is eight. What medication do you want to give me? Do you want me to give Daloxan or Narcan? The answer is no. For the NCLEX, it is assumed that you have the doctor's order. You do not need to call the doctor to tell the doctor, please give me the order. You have the order already. The only thing that you have to identify is if that doctor's order, if that medication order is appropriate for the client's condition. So this is a, an extremely important scenario and an important rule to learn. This is not a content question. This is a prioritization question. It happens that in this case, the administration of the medication is the first priority, but be very careful. I can tweak this question around and maybe that is not the answer. You have to be careful with that. Of course, you have to know that hydromorphone or Dilaudid is a narcotic and that naloxone or Narcan is the antidote. But still, this is a priority question. Why? Because calling the doctor is not wrong. We are going to call the doctor. It's just that it's not my first priority. Thank you, Brani, for supporting our channel. It's been a while since I haven't seen you here on YouTube. Good to see you, buddy. Thank you for having you here. Ms. Verberly, thank you for supporting our YouTube channel. I appreciate it. Thanks to everybody that uh, every day during this training have supported our channel. So, there's something really important to learn on this question. One, how to use the when to call the doctor strategy. And two, you need to learn this important rule for the NCLEX you have the doctor's order. Remember, it's the perfect, perfect world. Barbara, can I administer without a medical order? That is just exactly what I just mentioned. So if you are getting here at different points of the presentation, make sure you review the whole question, the whole scenario. It's going to be very important for you. If it is mentioned there, it is a medical order. Great. F uh, FIBA NAIR. Excellent. All right. So let's review another question. Here's the following question. The telemetry monitor tech notifies the nurse of the strip shown below. Which should the nurse implement first? So, excellent question here. I want you to think about it, analyze it, look at the EKG strip, and interpret it. Somebody said, Professor, I want to see EKG. Here you go. This is an EKG question. All right. So, Sinat Kamis, if it is assumed that you have a doctor's order in the NCLEX, how about in the real practice? Do I have to call a doctor and ask, if he wants me to administer the naloxone, of course. In the real practice, you have to call a doctor and say, doctor, I need this medication order. For the real life scenario, yes. For the NCLEX, no. Okay? Thank you, Jaismar, for supporting our YouTube channel. Thank you very much. Thank you, Maria, Maria Suarez, for supporting our YouTube channel. All right, so I see some of you saying, uh, Professor, this is VTAC. 
I will do answer number two. Okay. So everybody's agreeing with answer number two. All right. So what am I going to do first when I see this EKG strip? We have VTAC, ventricular tachycardia. So what is the priority nursing action? What is my first step? Once again, answer number three and four. Call the code blue, call the healthcare provider, begin CPR. So I have answers that is telling me to go get help from somebody else. In answer number four, the healthcare provider. Let's use the same strategy. Is there an answer that I can do as a nurse? That is within my scope of practice. Yes. Do I have an answer that helps the patient's condition? That helps me validate the patient's condition? Yes. So if that's the case, do not call the doctor as the priority. Now, what do I have to do before I call a code blue? The patient needs to be in cardiac or respiratory arrest. Is my patient in cardiac or respiratory arrest? I don't know. Because the patient in ventricular tachycardia can have a pulse or can be pulseless VTAC. It depends. So I need to assess my patient first. So calling the code blue is not appropriate. Calling the doctor prior to doing an assessment in this scenario is not appropriate. And beginning CPR, once again, I have to check the pulse. So answer three and four are eliminated. Now we have answer one and two. And we're gonna talk a little bit this is another strategy that you will learn in other trainings but there are some delegation principles here involved in this scenario because answer number one says instruct the UAP to go check on the patient and there is a guideline for that if there is any possibility that your patient is unstable you cannot delegate nursing care to the UAP or the LPN if the patient is unstable. Therefore, answer number one is eliminated. The correct answer is answer number two. So I will go to the patient's room, I will check the pulse, and I will identify if the patient has a pulse, yes or no. No pulse, CPR. Somebody call the code blue, I need help. Begin CPR. But you need to determine if the patient has a pulse or not. Because the nursing intervention in pulseless VTAC is different than the nursing interventions in VTAC with a pulse. Thank you, Ms. Mildred, for that uh, super chat. Thank you for supporting our YouTube channel. I appreciate it. Thank you, Antonieta, for that awesome comment. I appreciate it. Thank you, Tatiana. Thank you, Maxino. Thank you for being here. I'm glad you like it. The protocol, according to the American Heart Association, is once the patient is unresponsive and you identify that the patient does not have a pulse, you quickly ask for somebody to call the code blue, activate the code blue. If it's outside the hospital, someone call 911 and then you begin doing CPR. 
But this is automatically. You, no pause. Somebody call 911 or somebody activate the code blue. CPR. Okay? It's, it doesn't take long. But the priority, accordingly to the American Heart Association, is calling for help. Okay? Ms. Sheila says, too, because it is subjective data from the telemetry monitor. You need to go and, and complete an assessment. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you, Yusel Nunez. Every single day you have donated to our channel. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Nice uh, little sticker, cute sticker. <laughs> Thank you, JC Pereira. Thank you for supporting our YouTube channel. All right, so let's go and see another scenario. Professor, I am struggling. I am struggling uh, with EKG. All right, maybe we can we can do like a Zoom EKG class very soon. All right, all right. I'm just uh, looking at the chat to see if there's any any questions. Uh, uh, Babao, I like your interpretation. I was recommended by Lisbeth. Oh, thank you, Lisbeth, for recommending students to our YouTube channel. I appreciate it. Thank you, Miss uh, or, or Lauri. Thank you, Lauri, for supporting our YouTube channel. Thank you, uh, JC. Thank you, Fedra, Alexandra, for supporting our YouTube channel. Thank you, Susie, Pierre, for supporting our YouTube channel. All right, all right. Let's go to the next question. It says, a client receiving chemotherapy for cancer has an elevated serum creatinine level. What should the nurse do next? So in this scenario, it's telling us that there is an elevated serum creatinine level, but it, it does not give us the number. But it says that it's elevated. What should the nurse do next? Answer number one says, cancel the next scheduled chemotherapy. Answer number two, administer the scheduled dose of chemotherapy. Answer number three, notify the healthcare provider. And answer number four, obtain a urine specimen. So once again, we see an answer that we're calling the doctor. So let's use the same strategy again. Is there an answer that I can do that helps the patient with the condition that this scenario is describing? Let's see. Does canceling the next schedule chemotherapy helps the patient? Well, the patient has cancer. The patient needs chemotherapy. Is it under my decision making to cancel a treatment or not? No, I cannot do that. Because depending on how elevated the serum creatinine level is, the doctor can decide, let's continue, let's do one more treatment, or no, let's cancel the treatment. The doctor needs to analyze this before I cancel a treatment. So answer number one is eliminate. Answer number two, Administer the scheduled dose of chemotherapy. Answer number two is not appropriate either because we have a problem. Serum creatinine level tells us about renal function. The chemotherapy is being nephrotoxic. So I cannot just assume that this is okay 
and continue like nothing is happening. So answer number two harms my patient. I have to eliminate it. How about answer number four? Obtaining a urine specimen. Is obtaining a urine specimen going to help me? Is going to help a patient with an elevated serum creatinine level? No. This answer does not help my patient's condition. Therefore, the answer is call the doctor. So you have something to learn here. We saw several scenarios. In two scenarios, we discover something to do for the patient within the answer choices that were under our scope of practice and helped the patient's condition. Therefore, in those scenarios, we did not call the doctor. But now we have another scenario that there is nothing that we can do to help the patient therefore the correct answer is calling the doctor i hope that you have learned this strategy because i assure you you will use it a lot on your exam thank you alexandra troncoso once again thank you alexandra for supporting our channel, our channel every day. Thank you very much. Uh, Mahmoud said, I'm an old age, AHA and ACLS trainer. Excellent. And you can teach us a little bit about that. <laughs> Thank you, Maribel Mercano, for supporting our YouTube channel. All right, excellent. So, do you want to keep learning? Do you want to learn our next strategy? The Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs strategy? You want to learn how to apply that prioritization strategy on NCLEX style question? Don't go anywhere. It's going to get very, very interesting. We are day five of our seven day training. We got two more training days to go. I see a lot of you have uh, joined our YouTube training today. We have 389 uh, nurses out there around the world joining our crusade, joining, joining our seven day training today. Please help me by liking this video right now. I want all of you guys that are here in this training right now, if you like this training, if you think this training is helping you, like this video, like this video right now. All you have to do is click that like button and you will help me help others out there. And of course, share this video, share it everywhere, on Facebook, on Telegram, on WhatsApp, TikTok, or whatever. It allows you to share this video, share it with other people so they can also learn about this critical thinking and prioritization strategy. So let me see, let me see you liking this video. Thank you, Agnieszka Curbelo for supporting our YouTube channel. Thank you, Ms. Rebonda Hooks for supporting our YouTube channel. Thank you very much. Erinea Montero, thank you for supporting our YouTube channel. Uh, Areli said, Professor, uh, Mr. Ryan asked if he said, hold the schedule chemotherapy, will that be correct? Yes, you can hold the therapy and then call the doctor. That will be a correct response. So excellent point. Ryan, I'm sorry, I did not see your question. If, if you see that I don't see it, there's a lot of comments. So I cannot keep up and concentrate with the uh, with the training, but I, I'll try to answer 
uh, as much as I can, okay? Nerladis Viña, thank you for supporting our YouTube channel. Beatriz Delgado, thank you for joining and for supporting our YouTube channel. Mahmoud, I sent it to many of our Palestinian nurses. Excellent, thank you, thank you very much. Ms. Rosa Puican, thank you, teacher, your class is very good. All right, well, let's continue, this is getting better. Let's talk about our Maslow's hierarchy of needs strategy. I love this strategy, I teach it to all my students. Uh, in our course, we have a course for our Latino nurses that is called uh, How to Pass the NCLEC, step by step, the Spanish version. So if there's any Latino nurses out here that you're listening to this uh, YouTube uh, live training and you want to join the Latino, the Spanish Academy, we can help you with that as well. Make sure you communicate with our advisor. She's probably gonna put her number sometime. Just follow that and uh, give her a call. But remember, only Spanish nurses because uh, that is our Spanish side of the academy. But us, English-speaking nurses out here, let's continue. Maslow's hierarchy of needs strategy. This strategy has four essential steps. The first step, you're going to look at the answers. And you're going to determine if within the answers you have a mixture of physiological responses and psychosocial responses. But you may say, Professor, what is a physiological response? What is a psychosocial response? Physiological needs are those related to body functions, homeostasis, nutrition, um, airway, breathing, circulation, ABGs. Basically, if those physiological needs are affected, the patient dies. The patient decompensates and dies. Now, what is a psychosocial need? Psychosocial need usually has to do with emotions, feelings, um, learning process, mind stuff. Not neurological functioning because that is also physiological. And also remember that for the NCLEX, pain is a psychosocial need for the NCLEX, okay? If you don't know what I'm talking about, go back to day one and listen to day one review, all right? Let me see what your professor, we need an English academy. <laughs> I'll try, I'll try to do something very soon. I'll write a prescription. You're, you're a miracle professor. Thank you. Joanna, this is my, my favorite strategy. Uh, Fariba, my friend passed NCLEX, she said 5% from you world have to relay on your knowledge. Yes, knowledge is very important. Knowledge, it is very important. Remember, it's 50-50. 50% knowledge, 50% critical thinking. You can have all the knowledge you want if you don't use your critical thinking. Apply nursing knowledge and use prioritization strategies, you will not pass the NCLEX. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. I've been doing this, guys, for four years already. Thousands of students that I've been interacting with. I talk with students every single day. Trust me on what I'm telling you. I'm not selling you here nothing. This is a free course. I'm not interested in selling anything here. I'm trying to help you. Listen to what I'm saying. I know that it's a little bit different than what you're hearing out there. But trust me. Don't believe that 99% effectiveness and all they teach is content, that is not true. 
you need to learn prioritization. You need to learn how to apply nursing knowledge or you will fail. Listen to what I'm telling you. I have over and over, day by day, nurses contact me and tell me the same thing. Professor, I took the NCLEX. I thought I was ready. I've studied for many months. I know every content. I study the sounders from left to right. And I failed with 75 questions. The minimum amount of questions. And as soon as they tell them, I tell them, learn strategies, learn critical thinking, apply this. They go, take the NCLEX, and pass with 75 questions. So why the difference? Because that is the key. And I'm not saying that all my students pass. I will not lie to you. I'm not gonna lie. I've had students fail, yes. Why? God knows why. Maybe they didn't dedicate enough time. Maybe they didn't study enough. I don't know, but it is simple. A lot of our students have passed the NCLEX using these guidelines and techniques. The question is, why others have not been able to pass? What happened? They didn't develop that critical thinking. So I repeat once again, it is not, I'm never telling you, and I will never tell you, put nursing knowledge aside. No, it is important. It is important to learn nursing knowledge, but do not stop there and develop your critical thinking. Enough said, okay? So, you need to identify physiological, psychosocial. What, which of my answers are physiological and which of my answers are psychosocial? And just keep that in mind. Then, you're gonna do step number two. Step number two is eliminate all the psychosocial answers. Why? Why am I going to eliminate the psychosocial answers? Because if I have a physiological problem that needs attention, and I have a psychosocial problem that needs attention, physiological is the priority, therefore I eliminate psychosocial. Always know there's some exceptions that we will see. Step number three very important does the remaining physiological answers make sense does it make sense yes or no and i see a lot of students making this mistake they go from two to four and they eliminate step number three they eliminate the, does it make sense? So as soon as they see a oxygen, fluid option, they automatically pick that without really thinking if it makes sense to the patient's condition. So you have to ask, does this physiological response that I have in front of me, does it make sense to the patient's condition? Does it help? my patient's condition? If the answer is yes, then apply ABC. That is very important. Do not automatically go to ABC because you're gonna make a lot of mistakes. Lourdes, teacher, I have a doubt with pain because there are some cases where I can see the pain as a physiological symptoms. Can you talk about that? The problem with pain, I'm going to give you an example. Let's say a patient has a heart attack, a myocardial infarction. The patient has chest pain. Well, that is the priority, professor, because the patient is having an MI. Yes, the priority with the MI is not the pain. The priority with the MI is the occlusion of the coronary artery. You need to relieve that. That's why one of the first medications that you give is nitroglycerin. You have to help with a circulatory problem. Yes, the pain is the manifestation of the physiological problem, 
But let's say you have a patient with a chronic back pain and you have another patient that has hypotension. Hypotension has the priority. Why? Physiological, chronic pain, psychosocial. Or let's say you have a patient with sickle cell anemia. Those patients present to the ER with a lot of pain. The priority is not giving pain medication, is giving intravenous fluids. Why? Once again, physiological need. So you have to be very, very careful with that. Thank you, Lisette, for supporting our YouTube channel. Professor, we need help with uh, selector applies. We will, we will get to that as well. All right, perfect. So let's practice our next scenario. Uh, uh, this Maya's Nanclex exam won't be a problem if you go work with someone like Miss Josephine. <laughs> She's God sent. She saved me from taking the exam. Miss Maya Natalia, what are you doing here? You know, go be with uh, Miss Josephine. Uh, you are in Enclex Crusade International. Please be respectful. I know you're probably a scammer trying to comment and getting nursing students to buy not good stuff. So please be respectful unless it's like a robot or something like that. <laughs> it's funny. It really is. Uh, Carile. Thank you, Miss Carile. Uh, for joining our our live and supporting our YouTube channel. <laughs> Ronsa say, Maya, leave us, leave us alone. <laughs> uh, oh my God, there's some people trying to promote another professor. <laughs> it's okay, Jessica, I don't, I don't, I don't really care. L listen, whoever is here, is here. If you like what you see, you think that this training can help you stay. If you don't like, yeah, it's okay. It is what it is. I do it with, uh, with, with love. I do it because I enjoy it. So let's continue. Let's practice this Maslow's hierarchy of needs strategy. This is the question. So remember, look at the question. Identify the five key factors of an NCLEX question. Analyze the answer, determine which one is physiological? Which one is psychosocial? Does it make sense? Apply ABC. So think of that. And I know you probably won't get it right away, but you'll get it little bit by little. Thank you, Mr. Lester, Lester Pineda. Thank you very much. She yeah, please block her. So misleading. I don't know how to block her. I don't know how to do it. I'll, I'll block it later on. Don't follow that one. Don't, don't go to the scam. All right. So, if you don't know nobody, please. It's <laughs> I, need to, uh, I, I need to hire somebody there to, to help me block. The claim diagnosed with sickle cell anemia. Huh? We're talking about sickle cell anemia. We talked about that in a few minutes, a few minutes ago. Claim diagnosed with sickle cell anemia comes to the emergency department complaining of joint pain throughout the body. The oral temperature is 102.4 and the pulse oximeter reading is 91%, which action should the emergency department nurse implement first? Request arterial blood gases, start, administer oxygen via nasal cannula, start an IV with an 18 gauge angiocath, and prepare to administer analgesics as order. Let me fix this, uh, this one too. All right, so what do you think is the answer? And most important, why? Why do you think that's the answer? Thank you, Ms. Denia, Denia Sanchez, for supporting our YouTube channel. 
I see some responding number two, three, four. Uh -huh. You see, this is a little bit more difficult. It's a more difficult scenario. So we're getting to the core of uh, critical thinking. All right. So what is my problem? Let's identify those keywords. The diagnosis is sicosalamine. We don't know who the client is. There's not a lot of description about the client. Comes to the emergency department. Okay. Comes to the emergency department. It goes so right. Complaining of joint pain throughout the body. So the patient has pain. The oral temperature is 102.4. So we have fever, high fever. And the O2 saturation is 91%. Which action should the emergency department nurse implement first? Priority keyword. Request arterial blood gases, stat, administer oxygen via nasal cannula, start IV for an 18 gauge angiocath, and prepare to administer analgesic. So let's use this strategy. Request arterial blood gases. So arterial blood gases, we're going to categorize as physiological. Administer oxygen. This is physiologic. A start an IV with an 18 gauge angiocat. What is the reason for the IV? Administration of fluids. So we're going to categorize this as a physiological response as well. And answer number four prepare to administer analgesics, medication. This is psychosocial because is going to take care of the patient's pain. Remember what I told you, and I talked about this in day one. Pain, we're going to categorize for the NCLEX as psychosocial. So the first step is identify which answer is physiological and which answer is psychosocial. We have determined that answer number four is psychosocial and we are going to eliminate answer number four. So we have answer number one, answer number two, and answer number three left. Which one of the three physiological answers is going to be the correct one? And I saw a few of you selected one, a few of you selected two, a few selected three, and some of you selected four, now you know that if you use the assess, the, if you use the Maslow's hierarchy of needs strategy, you would have eliminated answer number four. You would not have made that mistake. Okay? So, answer number four, eliminated, gone. Okay? So, answer number one, two, and three. Look at answer number one, request arterial blood gas. This means call somebody, request the another department to come, collect the arterial blood gas, send it to the lab, wait for the lab to come back with results, and then I will know. This is delaying patient care. The patient has an emergency. I need to deal with that emergency. Okay. Uh, thank you, Ms. Raisa Espinosa, for supporting our channel. Thank you very much. So, we took one out of the game. We took four out of the game. Now, we have to decide in between two and three. So, we ask step number three of the strategy. Does it make sense? Does it make sense to apply oxygen? Yes. The patient's O2 saturation is 91. The patient has hypoxia. Therefore, answer 
oxygen is appropriate makes sense so we're gonna leave it does inserting a an IV 18 gauge make sense yes the patient needs fluids therefore I need an IV gauge I need an 18 gauge 20 gauge maximum to administer fluids so answer number three makes sense so now I go to step number four which one is a b c oh oxygen is a b c and is the priority answer so the correct answer is answer number two oxygen okay all right and uh, let me review some of your answers that way i can i can help you let me see four psychosocial excellent me uh, mahmoud amro said why eliminate four anal analgesics so i don't know if, if that was a question i think it was a question why eliminate four the reason why we eliminated number four is because it's psychosocial in nature and the patient has also hypoxia by the 91% O2 saturation. So we have pain, psychosocial, and then we have O2 saturation 91, that's physiological. Physiological takes the priority over pain. But remember, the patient has two conditions, minimum. Well, it has several conditions. So Psycho cell, joint pain, fever, and hypoxia. But out of all those problems, the priority is the oxygen problem. That is why our answer is number two. Okay? Shia, number one is out because that is delaying patient care. I don't have time for that. Excellent. Excellent. Very good. Nicholas, I have selected four because the patient came to the ER for pain. Nicholas, remember this. When we're thinking about prioritization, we are not saying that we will not administer pain medication. Yes, the patient will get pain medication. It means that it's not the first answer. It means that it will not be my first choice. This is extremely important. Because if you have in your mind that if you eliminate it, it's because you're not going to do it, then you're going to make a lot of mistakes. I will do it, but it will not be my priority or first action. The patient has fever and needs antipyretics. True, but that is not one of the answer choices. Okay? That is not one of the answer choices. So I cannot think about that one. Be careful. That is called something we call the what if syndrome. Okay? That's for another day. Lester, I plan to take the NCLEX exam early next year. I'm a racer nurse, but I have been away from the profession for more than 20 years. Can I still pass my the exam? Absolutely, Lester. Absolutely. It may take you a little bit longer to catch up, but yes, you can do it. If that is your dream, you can do it. I see you guys still talking about... I don't see Maya anymore. I don't, <laughs> I don't know where Maya went. I don't see it anymore. All right, sounds good. Okay, you wanna go to the next question? You wanna see how we apply this strategy in another scenario? Because I, wa I wanna give you several scenarios so you see how this strategy changes, okay? 
Uh, 90% not too bad for sickle cell anemia. Yes, but remember, we have to think of parameters, normal parameters. Most of the nursing books says usually 92 to 100, 93 to 100, normal. So anything below that is abnormal and requires an intervention, okay? Uh, other than fluids, fluids, oxygen, pain medication, that's usually the priority in uh, sickle cell. Uh, not confidence in this answer. Well, it is, it is the answer. No doubts in my mind. That is the answer. So the most important for you, Mr. Mahmoud Amro, you have to try to get what I'm trying to teach you, okay? Remember, we have several answers that are important in this scenario, but we have to think of prioritization. We have to think what is the most important answer that if I don't do it, the patient can ser seriously be harmed. What do we have? Getting the arterial blood gas, we can do that later. Starting the IV line, we can do that later. And administering pain medication, okay, analgesics, is usually administered IV, so I will need to start the IV first, give the analgesic medication via IV, so I'm going to do all that and delay the administration of oxygen? No incorrect thinking and you have to be careful with that okay um let me see below 93 is 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 bad yes for most nursing books they say 93 to 100 but i have seen some nursing books saying 92 to 100 so below 92, uh, hypox. Okay. All right. Very good. Let's go to the next question. Here it is. So we have a, a nurse caring for a client who arrived to the ER from a local skilled nursing facility. The client is confused. The temperature is 102.5, the blood pressure is 82 over 36, and the heart rate is 124. Which prescription should the nurse implement first? So we have another priority question here. What do you think is the answer and why? Try to use the strategy. So, don't worry about the chat, guys, okay? I see you getting too worried about these people joining the live and texting. Who cares about them? Listen to what I'm telling you. Do not let the chat uh, take you out of focus. Only look at the chat to text your answer. And then, take away your eyes from the chat, look at the question, analyze the question, listen to me, because there's nothing we can do about that. Okay, so don't worry about it. Just listen to me. So I see a lot of you are selecting answer number four. Mm -hmm. So remember, still think of the steps. Step number one, number two, three, and four. So the problem in this scenario, we have neurological problems, confused, we have fever, we have hypotension, and we have compensatory tachycardia. What are we going to do first? Another priority question. Oh, look what we have here. Notify the healthcare provider. You know a strategy for that. So now, 
you see that answer number one, it says, call the doctor, you're already saying, aha, uh -huh, I know. I know what strategy I can use. I can say, okay, do I have an answer that is under my scope of practice that I can do and assist and help my patient with the problem? Yes, there is. Yes, there is. So, I'm not going to call the doctor as my priority answer. We're going to eliminate that one automatically. So, administering antibiotics, that's going to help a physiological problem. Assessing for oxygen saturation, that's going to help with a physiological problem. And administering fluids, that's going to help with a physiological problem. Excellent. So, step number one, we did it. We have physiological answers. There are non-psychosocial answers to eliminate, so we don't have to do that step. Step number three, the important step, does it make sense? So, does it make sense to administer antibiotics in this patient's condition? Well, I don't have a lot of information, but this could probably represent sepsis because of the fever, hypotension, and tachycardia. So my patient could need antibiotics. I need to do a blood culture first, but that is a possible answer and it makes sense. Administering or assessing the O2 saturation or the oxygen saturation does it make sense in this condition? I can always assess for O2 saturation. But if you read the clinical scenario, the patient's problem, the description of the patient's problem, is not an oxygen problem like we saw in the previous scenario. So answer number three does not make a whole lot of sense accordingly to the problem that I have described. You cannot start playing the game of, well, if the patient uh, is septic, then the uh, cardiac output is going to be low, and then the perfusion is going to be low, so ultimately that is going to cause oxygen problems because you're thinking way too, head, too ahead of yourself. You have to learn how to analyze the scenario you have in front of you. Remember, this is not a medicine test. It's not USMLE step one or step two test. This is basic nursing knowledge. So I have fever, I have low blood pressure and tachycardia. What do I need to do? Fluids. This patient needs fluids. Plus, these are symptoms of Shock. This patient probably is in septic shock. Fluids need to be administered yesterday. So, my answer number two and four makes sense. Three, I have to eliminate because there's no indication of a respiratory problem in the stem of the question. And if I analyze two and four, four has the priority. Four is the correct answer. Why? It is physiological. It is A, B, C circulation. Three is also A, B, C, but does not make sense to this condition. So, I hope that makes sense. Now, there is another strategy that you will learn tomorrow. I'm not going to go over that today. You will learn tomorrow. That is the assessment versus implementation strategy. And if you use that strategy, this same scenario, assessment is not going to be the answer because we're dealing with an emergency. So that will be another reason another reason not to select 
answer number three. All right. Okie dokie. Let me see. Let me read the chat. Professor, I see talking about the needing a doctor's order. Professor, don't I need to call the doctor first in order to tell me that it's okay to administer the fluids? No, we already talked about that. Go back to the beginning of day five. I talked about that. I talked about the NCLEX rule. If you, if you came late to the training and you didn't hear that part, go back. Go back to the beginning of the training so you can learn about that rule. It's very important. Why the administration of antibiotic will be a physiological need? What is an antibiotic administered for? To treat a bacterial infection. And bacteria affects the client in a physiological way. So that is why we categorize the administration of antibiotics as physiological. Okay? Uh, FIBA, going back to the question before, why is Spain considered psychosocial? It's just a rule for the NCLEX. It takes the priority physiological needs over pain. Unless, like I said about the problem from the MI, that patient has a circulatory problem, and that is the priority in that scenario. Okay? Uh, Jaismar, there, there are no other explanations like your professor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jaismar. Thank you very much. Okay, well, very good. So let's go to the next scenario, okay? So we know we have eliminated number one, number two, number three. The answer is number four. Let's go to the next scenario that is gonna be very interesting. I'm gonna teach you something that I don't see it being taught very often. And I have seen some Q banks making a lot of mistakes when it comes to this following scenario and I want you to learn it because it will definitely increase your chances of selecting the correct answer in scenarios like that. So here's the question. Read it, identify the key factors and use the strategy. And as you're thinking, I'm looking here at the, your, your comments. Messina, is there a scenario where in the NCLEX none of the answers are correct? No. No, there's always going to be a correct response, and you have to identify. Shia, this is really helpful. Thank you. Excellent. I'm glad. I'm glad he's helping you out. Mr. Ramon, thank you. Wonderful class. So I see some of you... Some of you selecting four, some of you selecting three. Okay, so in between three and four, ah, you're gonna learn something very, very important today. All right, so the next providing care to a client following a prostatectomy. 
which of the following nursing diagnosis is the priority and I want you to listen to this. Whenever you see the question that states, which of the following nursing diagnosis is the priority, the strategy to use is Maslow's strategy, the one that I just taught you. Whenever you see that, think Maslow's strategy. That's the strategy that applies here all the time. But we're going to add something extra. Remember, I'm trying little bit by little bit increase your, your critical thinking. I cannot tell you everything because you're going to get so confused. Little bit by little bit. We're going to use Maslow, but we're going to use another guideline. And that is risk versus real problem. So in this scenario, not only we have the Maslow's hierarchy of needs strategy to use, but we are going to use the risk, okay, or risk and potential means the same thing versus real. So I ask you a question. What is more important? A real problem that is happening right now or something that is not happening yet and has the potential to occur? What do you think is the priority? Real, now, or potential, maybe, maybe happens later on. What has the priority? Tell me. Comment on the chat. Gina says, real. Real has the priority. A real problem is the priority over a potential problem. So in this scenario, yes, imbalanced fluid volume, yes, hemorrhage, it is ABC, but it is a risk or potential problem. Real problems has the priority. A real problem has the priority over a potential problem or a risk. Therefore, two and three, gone. Eliminated. Now we have two real problems. Deficient knowledge, psychosocial. Acute pain, we talked about pain, psychosocial. But acute pain has priority over knowledge. So I eliminate answer number one, and the answer is four. Now, listen to me very careful. And I'm going to take all these drawings. If answer number two, let's say, answer number two, instead of saying risk four, it says imbalance fluid volume without the risk part, listen to me, if the same question, instead of saying in answer number two, risk for imbalanced fluid volume, it said imbalanced fluid volume, and I have all the same answers, the answer will not be the acute pain, will be the imbalanced fluid volume. Does that make sense? Do you understand what I'm saying? If you do not understand, this small detail, you're going to answer a bunch of questions wrong. You have to understand this. Remember, a real problem is the priority over a potential problem every day. Why? 
because a potential problem is not occurring yet. Very important. All right. What do you think about today's training? I know it's different. You've probably never heard any of this. You're probably in shock. It is what it is. You have two options, okay? And I tell you this with uh, being humble and because I care. You have two options. You can either say, this professor is making sense. This makes sense. I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going to try to apply this. Or you can say, eh, he doesn't know what he's talking about and move on. The choice is yours. If you're taking the NCLEX, if you've taken the NCLEX before and failed, and whatever you've been using so far is not working, maybe, just maybe, you can give it a shot. Try to apply it. Use it in NCLEX style questions. And your scores will begin to change. Or don't do it. <laughs> Up to you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for joining NCLEX Crusade International. Thank you for trusting our channel. Thank you for being here, even though we had some <laughs> scammers on the chat today. Hey, they, they, they'll continue to come, especially the, the more I, I, I am known by other nurses, the more they're going to join the channel. It is what it is, but it's okay. Don't worry about them. Focus, concentrate in what I'm teaching you, and you will learn. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, go ahead and do it right now. Don't do it later. You'll forget. Find the subscribe button somewhere in our YouTube channel. Join it so you are not missing any of our videos. And also, I put the link to our, to our Telegram group in the comment section, in the description section. Make sure you have joined our YouTube channel. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel and also join our Telegram group so you don't miss any of the valuable information. Thank you, Carlos, for uh, supporting our YouTube channel. Thank you, Miss Victoria, for uh, talking about Miss Josephine and the passing the NCLEX with Miss Josephine. I don't know who Miss Josephine is, but it, it, okay, whatever. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Vivian. Sarai, Rio versus Risk. Rio is the priority. Correct. Uh, may I ask uh, Mr. Ma Mahmoud? I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correct. May I ask why you call this Crusader? Well, the name of, the, of my company, when I first uh, developed it, back in 2007, the, the Latino version, I call it NCLEX Crusade because I think preparing for the NCLEX is like a crusade. It's like, a, it's like a, a battle that we all have to face where we're going to encounter obstacles, we're going to face problems, it's going to be difficult. And in between, you have to develop a warrior mentality. And back in the days, the the warriors, the knights that were involved in the crusades, they were called crusaders. So that's why I call my students NCLEX Crusaders. So that's the story <laughs> behind it. I don't know if it makes sense to you, but it makes a whole lot of sense to me. So that is why. So I call all my students NCLEX Crusaders. And I'm very... Uh, happy to call that and they get very happy when they're called that because it's part of our family we are a big family all right thank you Siler. thank you Dianetis that is an NCLEX crusader who is a registered nerd now in days she passed the NCLEX uh, there goes Victoria <laughs> 
Adrian, Clark, I need you to be my mentor. Taking the NCLEX in May. Okay, Adrian, good. Thank you, Alva. Uh, Phyllis, what is your link to Telegram? Um, Elizabeth, can you put the, the link to the Telegram now so they can see it, please? Maximo, excellent job, Professor. I'm on my way to success. Yes, sir. Let's do this. Kimberly, I have been seeing the training videos and I absolutely love it. And it's, it is motivating me a lot. Very good, Kimberly. I'm glad you like it and I'm glad it's helping you. Maxino you know, says, Miss Josephine is a liar. <laughs> Mr. Tomasa, thank you for a great class. Thank you, Tomasa. Welcome, welcome. Alexandra, I am an NCLEX Crusader and I am very proud of that. Thank you, Alexandra. I know you are and you have changed so much. Your critical thinking have changed so much since we started working together and I am very proud of that. And I know for a fact that you will pass your NCLEX soon and you will tell your testimony to everybody. I know that for a fact. Uh, God love, don't know why my financial support have not been reflected yet. It probably appear later on. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here and that is the least important. The most important is that you hear your learning and that you're preparing. Any questions that you may have that you might want me to answer maybe a few more minutes and then we'll end up end this life. Okay. Uh, Shade, uh, I can be, what is the next teaching? Our next live will be tomorrow. Actually, I forgot to put that. Uh, our next live will be tomorrow at 5 p.m. And we are going to continue with priorities. So what I want to share tomorrow is other prioritization uh, and critical thinking strategies to continue helping you develop that critical thinking. Okay. Professor, can you explain CAT? computer adaptive testing. Okay, so Angelina. Angelina, the CAT, computer adaptive test, the name of the test tells you what it does. It adapts to you. What that means is, let's say you answer a question incorrectly. The NCLEX has an algorithm that is going to determine, okay, and let's say, Angelina answered this question incorrect in this category. The next question could be a different category, but it's going to be an easier style question, less difficult. But if you answer the question correctly, the algorithm says, okay, she's okay. At that level of thinking, I'm going to put a higher difficult question, a more difficult question. And then you're going to answer that question. If you get it correct, the algorithm says, okay, let's give her another question, a little bit harder. And that is why it's so important to stay above the passing level. There is a video in our YouTube channel that talks about the computer adaptive test. Find it in one of the playlists. It, I explained it very, very simple there. And hopefully... It, uh, it helps you. The next class is tomorrow at 5 p.m. Lautrice, Robert, please help me pass the NCLEX. I love the way you break it down. Sure. Come with me. I'll be here to help you guys. Sinat, after the day seven, what, what are you doing again? I don't want the class to end. So my goal is after day seven, in the 
uh, Telegram group, I'm going to ask the students there which topic they want to review next. And I'm going to select seven topics that are uh, frequently mentioned by uh, students, let's say EKG or whatever it is. EKG, pharmacology, ABGs, and I'm going to pick seven topics and I'm going to create a training. Of course, it takes me some time to create it. I cannot create it overnight, but I'll start thinking of that and I'll create our next seven day training to do uh, another week. I know after uh, immediately after this training, I'm going on vacation for, for a week and basically I'm going to take some time to rest, but then what I plan to do after I come back from the uh, vacation, I am planning to give a few uh, live classes on Zoom. Okay, that I'm gonna I'm gonna tell when it is and the topic that I will be sharing, and that was gonna be for a cost, a very minimum cost, uh, to help those students that are taking the NCLEX like right away. Like I said, I don't have a a full NCLEX preparation training. Uh, fully in English, the one that I have is basically Spanish and English, and it will it will not be beneficial for you guys. But at least with those classes, uh, I call them practice classes. Maybe I can help some of you right before the taking your NCLEX until we start our next our next seven day training. So that is my goal. That is my plan. That's what I I plan to do. Remember, meanwhile. Because uh, I know I've seen some scammers on the Telegram group as well selling a course or something saying that it's me. Be careful with that. I am not selling anything yet. Okay? I'm not. You should not be sending money to anybody, anywhere. So be careful with that. Are you going to teach you, Sara? Yes, tomorrow I will talk a little bit about select or apply and we will practice some questions. Is, are these trainings recorded? Yes, these trainings stay recorded uh, on, on YouTube. If you're talking about the live trainings that I will be doing, the live Zoom classes, yes, I will be recording them. I have to always kind of like edit it a little bit, take the interaction with the students out of the recording, and I will make it available. I usually make it available within a week. And yes, I give some time for you to to review that class again and study it again, but that's for, for a later time, okay? Let's not worry about that now. Would it be before May? Yes, absolutely, it will be before May. Yes, for those um, nurses that are Spanish speaking, or that's your primary language, there is a huge YouTube channel uh, that we have for our Spanish nurses but everything there is in Spanish zero English there's no English there or actually I should say half and half but a lot of Spanish there so English speaking nurses do not go there you'll get so confused because you're not gonna understand half of the things I speak there so that's why I created this channel just for you guys and also to help my Spanish nurses learn and get better with English. Okay. And the ones that want to know how to join the Telegram group, on the top of the chat, there is a blue line that says NCLEX Crusade International, join RT or Telegram. Click on that blue line on the top that has the title for the YouTube channel and it will take you to the to the telegram group so try to do it now those who are not in the telegram yet in the telegram group yet see if I see you guys joining okay so I see you a few of you joining now Uh, uh, that is the YouTube Spanish channel is NCLEX Crusade without the international. Take the international part out 
and all that is half in Spanish. So, hope it helps. <laughs> Beatriz, Maya Victoria, what other professor takes the time to stay extra after they're given a class? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Beatrice. I appreciate it. Um, I'm going to say this for Adalsis, okay? Adalsis, el canal de Enclex Crusade en español, básicamente buscas en YouTube, pones Enclex Crusade sin la parte de internacional. So, Enclex Crusade solamente y te va a salir el canal de español, okay? Back to English. I apologize. I just wanted to help uh, Adalisis with her, her question. All right. Well, I'm done. Thank you for being here. Thank you for joining our day five training. Tomorrow, it will get even better. Don't miss the opportunity to join our day six, where you will be learning more strategies, more critical thinking. Thank you very much. God bless you. Bye-bye.